where were you born and what year? I was born in 1931 in uh, William Street, Cheshire. And uh, what was your life like when you were growing up in Cashel? All my true life was, well, I was lucky in the sense that uh, we didn't want. We were fairly, father had a good job and we were fairly, as, as people went at that time, we were fairly well off. And uh, what were your parents like, and did you have any brothers or sisters? Did I have any brothers and sisters? Yeah. I had six sisters and five brothers. What was your living like, your house and how was it like with money and your house? Well, I say we were fairly well. My father had a good job. He was a, a carpenter by trade. So we were fairly... Fairly well. Up. You're talking about my parents now, are you? Yeah. Oh yeah. He he he, uh, he he had a good living. My father had a good living. And your hobbies? What were your hobbies like? Did you? My know? hobbies. Yeah. Oh, I went for mostly salmon fishing. I couldn't get enough of time even. How? Where did you go salmon fishing? Well, mostly <coughs> mostly I used to go to Golden. That was the nearest. Uh, the nearest river, the shore. There was no river in uh, Cashel and such. And I used to fish in our finning. And if down in Carrick and Shore, but you had to pay extra to get down there, and money wasn't always that available. But any time I had money, I used to go to Carrick and Shore, because you were nearly guaranteed a salmon every time you went down there. How many, how many would you catch, like, a day going? In a day? Yeah. Oh God, if you killed uh, one in a day, you'd be lucky, but there was times, there was weeks I killed eight in a week. That was your most, wasn't it? Yeah. How did you feel when you caught your first fish? Oh, that was man of heaven, that was. Uh, did you eat, did you eat them or? No, I never liked fishing, that's funny. I used to catch trout as well now, but my wife now, she used to like, uh, she used to like a trout and, and uh, she used to eat them mostly, but I never liked fish at all. But I love the, the catch of them, I love, I love that part of it. Would you ever sell them? Oh yes, it was a big market. I remember Jacqueline Kennedy coming to to the palace. I used to sell, sell the salmon in the palace and, and uh, the manager wrote down to know he was expecting Jacqueline Kennedy as a guest. And uh, I killed a lovely fish, 12 or 13 pound. And uh, that's what Jacqueline had for her dinner. Because he makes salmon. Like, what were your friend's names? My friends' names? Yeah, where did you have any friends? Well, mostly the friends I had were, were uh, they're dead now. Billy Daffy was my greatest friend. He was a fine musician, Billy. I don't know, did you know him or did you hear him? But he was, uh, he was, uh, he was in the choir. He was associated with, he was associated with music all his life. We were great mates. And we were in a dance band together. He played a, at that time he played a trumpet. And when his lip failed, then he went on the bass guitar. He was a fine musician. One of the greatest, I suppose, that, that ever came out of catcher. Are you associated with any music or? Oh, I am with the brass band. I'm still in the brass band. I played the, the trombone. I used to play the euphonium. But uh, our age caught up with me and I, it is a very difficult instrument to play the euphonium. The parts are difficult. So I went from that to the trombone. Tell us about the history of um, the brass band. Oh, a long history. But I suppose, well, we the first time the catch of brass band was mentioned was uh, when they brought uh, Bianchini to, 
they are made. Now that's going back a number of years, and the the, the brass band led them to to uh, mail house. So they must have been long before that because they had the the, the notice on the paper was they looked splendid in their uniform. So I mean, if they were that far gone, it was earlier than by Ankeny's time even, when the band was uh, formed in Cashel. What was your favorite instrument? Audio podium, no doubt. Cause the, that's the, that puts the glass on all the instruments in the band. That's, that is the instrument, the euphonium. Uh, who got you into the music and... and well, and all the belonging to me were associated with the band, so it was a kind of a natural thing that you, you fell in line. When the time came, I, I joined up as well. I always wanted to be in the band. I always liked music. Uh, let's go back to your childhood. Your house, was it cramped or was there a lot of space for it? Lots of space? Well, the reason I went to William Street was that's where my mother used to... We were... Our house was in Borclock here. But we were a big family, as I told you before. Mm. And when my mother would be expecting, she went up to her mother's place in William Street for a bit of peace and quiet, like away from the the hustle bustle of a, of a big family, and that's how I ended up in uh, in Wilhelm Street. It was only a small little house, but a beautiful house. There was uh, two bedrooms upstairs, I think, and uh, a sitting room and a, a kitchen downstairs. That was uh, the sub total of uh, of our house. Uh, what was Cashel like in your childhood? Oh, God. What's different to what it is now? Oh, completely. Completely. <coughs> Cashel was a dead town. Practically dead. We were coming to the conclusion that we'd see the grass going up the main street one time, and it was that bad. <coughs> but it has come on in leaps and bounds in the last. 20, 25 years. It is a, a, a town now you'd like to be associated with. It's a modern town now. Back in my youth it was a <coughs> derelict, derelict town. What do you think were the reasons for that, Gus? Why was it so, so, <coughs> so we, poor? The, the first time the council got together about building a factory in cash and bring some kind of employment to the town. The water was the problem. We had no water. <coughs> the council had no way of getting it. So the first big project they took was the cash and water scheme, which brought plenty of water to the town. And from there on, Things happened. Uh, where did you get your water before they did that? So just out a little bit out the road in uh, George's land. It was a spring. That's where the the water supply and put full of lime. <coughs> Everything you you done was lime, 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 lime. So they they changed then and they went to. Uh, Oh, I know what to call the place. It's up the mountain anyway. Where we're getting the water from now. What was the school? Oh, school. Like? Yes. Oh, I went to school up and up and uh, the Dublin Road for a while. That was the old Christian Brothers School. School. Big barrack of a thing. And uh, the teachers there were the nicest. At any time. There was only one teacher that I really liked. There were two out of the whole lot was a fellow who used to teach English, a Mr. Doody. A brilliant man. And Brother Christy, a little humble little man who used to teach Latin. 
But they were, they were exceptions to the rule. The rest of them, there was a brother Thailand there. He was an absolute sadist. Anywhere he could hit you, he'd hit you. It didn't make any difference. I remember he hit in, uh, <coughs> he hit in a fella called Christy Coleman. With the edge of a ruler across the ear. I busted his ear from. And they got away with that. For the simple reason that if I come home to my house and complain about the weather, I get a bait. You damn say a word. They were right no matter what they done. And that was the, the norm in the school at the time. Was that your primary school? Primary school, yes. Yeah. And we went over to the second leader there wasn't too bad. Did That's where I met that Mr. Dewey now. He was an absolute, and he was brilliant. He, he used to teach us English. And if he took out, I remember him, the longest memory he had was a, a poem called Lock and Bear. Great Lock and Bear come out of the West. But when he, when he gave you a poem, he explained the whole business that it was like a picture by the time he was finished. I used to love studying with him. And then we had a little man, he was a, he was a cork lad. The butt we used to call him, he was a small little man. I know the buttons was his name, but the butt we used to call him. But he used to run his class like you run the court, you had a defence and a prosecution. And that, that was an enjoyable class as well, you know. That was all in the secondary now. In primary school, did you ever get hit? Did I ever what? Did you ever get hit? Oh, God, yes. We had a fella called Puddle. It was a slattery was his name. He lined you up every morning before you started it with the letter. That was to wake you up. That was the norm in that class. Ridiculous, wasn't it? But that was the norm. Line up when you came in and out with the hand. Put in that, it was a big slap, but it was a slap. And any slap with a letter, you remember it. Um, your secondary school, back there, um where was your secondary school? Our secondary school was uh, was where uh, down in the down, the Gordon Road now where the, where that's I don't know what school it is now down there. It's called Cormac. That's it. That was built. Uh, that was built new. <coughs> when I was going to school, they done the primary first, and when they finished the primary, then. They started on the, the second league. What were your teenage years like? Hectic. Why? Because I was associated with dance music. I was supposed, I was one of the very luckiest. I was telling you a few minutes ago about Daphne. We were the luckiest pair of lads in the town. We had money every week that nobody had. We were getting as much in the night as my father wouldn't get in a week for playing in the dances. And where was the dance hall in Cashel then? Well, that's the city hall now, as they call it. Where, where is that? Where is it's the main hall? street, right opposite the, the Cashel Hotel, you know, the Oh, the town hall, is yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, you weren't allowed to call it the town hall, that was the city hall. I weren't allowed to call it the town hall. Because, I don't know, it had some kind of a status, casual, as a city. The city of the kings is there. Uh, and if you called it the town hall, you were a properly brought to your knees, that was the city hall. Why? What things did you do to amuse yourself when you became a teenager? When I became a teenager. When I 
Well, I was associated with uh, the CYMF club, or the Parochial club, which was where uh, Bonners are living now. That was a club. And uh, they had billows there and, and uh, cows and all that kind of thing. And uh, I used to go there, to go down there regular, because I love billows. And I had a couple of cups like that. Uh, to show up my expertise. Yeah. As well as billards and, and going um, fishing, you you've obviously were busy playing the music uh, and you got plenty of money. So who, who did you spend the money on yourself or wh what did you do? Oh, well, uh, I mean, the, 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 there were plenty of outlets for the money, like. I used to leave some of it at home. and, and uh, But then we used to go away to all these concerts, <coughs> all these American bands that come over to Dublin or over to England, that's even so could fly out for a matter of 10 or 12 pounds, bring an airfare and, and uh, a hotel. What did you do when you left school? What did I do? Well, I was in the, the building business as well. I worked an awful lot for the Church of Ireland. I met the windows now in the, in the cathedral, the prison windows. I met them in the church. <coughs> These are the windows in the in St John's Cathedral, the Church yeah. of Ireland church. 49 pairs of glass on each window. And they were handmade, I made them myself. Was it long to put him up? Huh? Or was a lot of people helping you with him? No, only my father. You can imagine how many joints is in that window now with, with 49 pounds of glass in it. Every pane is four joints. I multiply that by, by 40. It's 160 joints at the window, and that's only the centre of it. I, I, I love the woodwork. The more intricate it was, the more I liked it. I, I done a, a freeze on the altar in, the same, in that cathedral, which is still there. I was imitating a, a plaster freeze that was done by I don't know, the Italians or something. And there was a bit of it missing, I met it up with timber. And I defy anyone at the end of the church to say it, which is which. I was very proud of that job. And was it unusual for, um, say, a Roman Catholic to work for the Church of Ireland at that time? Well, oh, very much so. Very much so. The, the, should even the old parents when I went up there first, they had misgivings about I going in there at all, you know. You were, you were ostracised half the time. But the funny thing about it is, when I got married, the first house we got was the, the little lodge in the church. We, that, was another, that was another first for the Catholics to get to, to live in the, in the church lodge. No little lodges there now, in there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful little house. That's where we lived after we got married. Did you always have plenty of food to eat? Luckily we did. Luckily we did. We were we were very lucky in that respect. How many meals a day would you have when you were young? Well we had three anyway, if it wasn't four. Did you eat certain foods on any special occasions? Oh, no, no, no. The, the only thing was that uh, Friday was a, a black fast day that was adhered to strongly in my time. So no way would they, would you uh, would eat meat of that, meat is next of a Friday. But them days are gone now again, aren't they? And during Easter time, would you have, would you eat anything special, or even around Easter Sunday, would you? Get oh, anything? eggs, eggs, eggs. 
I remember my mother, so she was kind, a kind woman. You'd have two boiled and three fried, and, <coughs> and she'd do them all. I'd have two fried eggs and three boiled eggs. And, and that was the norm with the, with the family. Where in Cashel were your favourite places to go to, and why? The club was my favourite haunt. Would all your friends go there? Or? All of them, yeah. We had a boys' fidelity that time. All the young boys, well, all them there used to go to the club. And did you like going up onto the rock? Because I, I guess you didn't have to, to pay when you were young to go up onto the rock of Cashel. Oh, yeah, we used to go up, but you weren't allowed, you weren't allowed to, to roam around the rock like you are now. There was a fellow there, Joe Minogue, and a contrary little man. We used to get in over the wall mostly, you know, and, and we'd be going to places that we shouldn't be going in there. <coughs> but if you were caught, you had a sore ear coming out of it. <laughs> How did you find out about things that were happening in Ireland and the whole world? Oh, we had the radio always. Was there any story associated with the Cashel area that you could recall? Uh, the only story that comes to mind now was when uh, it happened during the, the middle of the war. They had uh, different things happening for the welfare of the people, the like of if there was a, a bomb dropped in the town or a house went in fire. And it was a big gathering of the people. It was something that all the people used to come and sit down while this was going on, these different organisations, the, the, I don't know what do they call them, the, they were associated with the fire brigade. To show you how to handle, uh, how to handle different kinds of uh, uh, bombs and not to use water on some. And but I remember <coughs> one one case. The monster and Leinster Bank was about to be on fire, and they had a little man. They were bringing him down by by uh, a kind of a rail. The, Tying around him and, and make a jog strap and lowering him to the ground. But when they got him out of the sill of the wind anyway, the, the jog strap got twisted. And there was a man hanging and they couldn't get him up or get him down. And of course the cheers of the people it was, it was, it was something exciting to see. This man no, no one had a, and they couldn't get him up or down. Can you remember any traditions or customs in the Elden days in Cashel that have since died out? Oh, God, I can I remember as the young fella, as a matter of fact, I played at it. The, the ex soldiers on the. What day it was it? Happy day. All the ex soldiers out of the, the First World War, they'd all gather together in the main street for a parade to the church. And the Protestants used to pray to the Catholic Church. There were Protestants in it. The, the drill master was uh, Captain Cooper, but the Coopers were killing you. But I used to stand up in the box with the, with the corner. Blow the, the, the last horse in general salute before they moved off to the church. That was one tradition that died, and it is, it is sad like that they'll not remember the way that they were remembered, even though they did fight with the British 
تبغير اسمه لازم لازم دايل لازم مر البيت غاب تهدى يتصور تغلب تكيس المصدر قاعد سنة لا كيد لي يكون بريد يبي هن so these these people that were on and I think that's a a claim like that uh, and that tradition for one has been carried on. Were there any uh, major events like like wars that would have impacted on your life here in Cashel? Uh, were you were you born for World War Two, for example, or, or do you even remember us? Well, I don't remember, but. Uh, what year were you born? I was born in 31. 31, okay. Yeah. But I did leave a mark in the middle of the war. Because, uh, as you know, everything was rationed. I didn't know what rationing was. Yeah. All the, the, the major foods were, you couldn't even get so much of them. Like the likes of tea. You got a half an ounce per person per week. Sugar, a pound per person per week. And bread, one loaf per person per week. And that was black bread. When you, sometimes you, you be eating it and you put it out, whatever was swept up off of the floor the strings up with the bags and everything. It was all put into the flow. The wonderful people were not choked to death with it. Going into the war again, um, had you any family members in the war? Oh, I had my brother, Christy. And of course, in the, the First World War, we had, uh, we had a, a cousin, the first cousin, he won the Victoria Cross. Because the driver all way. So he was only a chap, he was only 18. And he was going back to, to London to pick it up in the past. All he said was, the top of his head was, was blown off, he had a steel cap on it. Lovely fella. But he got the Victoria Cross and the Medallion Medea, that's the highest French honour. He came home now, there was invitations to so all the major houses in, around the town. He was invited to dinners and so that's... And your brother Christy fought in World War Two. Oh, he did. Uh, yeah. um, again, would there, be ha would, would there have been a bit of opposition to that in the, in the town? Or well, he could never wear his uniform. He came home, he had to come back in Sibby. <coughs> I could never wear his uniform. Well, why is that? Oh, why? Ignorance together. Put it all down to ignorance and nothing else. Mm -hmm. Well, why, why, uh, he was proud to wear his uniform, but he couldn't wear it. That was the law. And, and how, how did he uh, think of joining the, the British Army, I guess, was it at that time? In World there War Two? There was, there was very little work at the time, like he, he went away with, uh, he went away with a couple of lads from the town. But, uh, and they walked it all the way to Belfast to join up. And of course, uh, he became sergeant, uh, he became a sergeant major, trust me. He, had a good, uh, he got a good pension. But then I had cousins in the First World War. They all joined up. And won a medallion. Did Christie win anything like that? Oh, he had a military medal, Christie. He fought in Dunkirk. He was uh, reported missing. We thought he was. We thought he was killed that time. He swam. He swam out from the beach for about three miles before he was. Before he was picked up. He was a good swimmer, and that's what saved his life. How do you think Ashley has changed over the years? 
או ברימוץ. כאשר לזימוץ פטר פלסט אני תראו סבי. I don't know is it anymore. Of course, the big, the big influx of, of uh, these foreign stores are after taken from the, the small shopkeeper. You have the likes of Aldi's and Lidl's and they very hard to compete with, with, uh, with that kind of uh, They can give a, a, a produce for a third of the price of what the little town shopkeeper can give it. So I know you said that you, you, you felt lucky throughout your life that you, you had enough and you had plenty, but you probably saw a lot of poverty at different oh God. periods. Oh, it was wicked. It was wicked. People had enough money even to, to bury their dead. What, what periods, what times would have been the worst? I'd say the middle 40s. Why would you say that? Nothing happened. Everything was at a standstill. Without a doubt, I'd say the middle 40s were the... But for my part, they were the best, because... I, as I said, I had the music. Music has played an important part in, in your life. Oh, very and much so. And in your family's life too. Oh, very much so, because... Uh, as I said before, I had money when... Uh, when nobody had it. My father slept the whole week for what I'd get for two or three hours on the stage. I know it is wrong, but that's was the way things happen. Uh, do you, do people um, much different nowadays to when you were growing up in the in the forties and the fifties. Uh, they are people are nicer now, I think. People couldn't afford to be nice in, when I was growing up. Now people seem to be they seem to be happier in them, in themselves even. Well, other people would say that there was more a sense of community back there, back then, though, that that people looked after. Oh, each other I, don't I don't know. I don't know that. I don't know. I wouldn't agree with that now. Mm. The 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 powers that be in them days. You you may never run them away. You could, but the powers that be today now. They helped the community an awful lot better. All the, all the pensioners and people on their own, they'll, they'll look at them better now, without a doubt, than, than they used to be. But would you know, you'd know less people now than you would have in the past? Would you know your neighbours quite well? Well, not lately, because I don't travel out as much, but when I was there, would I? I kept in, in contact with most of the people around. I nearly knew everyone in Catholic, you could say. You must have been like the famous, famous family in Cashel, right? With the McDonald's? Yeah. Well, they were fairly famous all right, they were. Is McDonald's, uh, um, there's not that many McDonald's in this area, are there? No, 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 they'll be all out of the one, we say, the one family. There's Mickey Mac there, but they're all for those children, that kind of way, you know. This video will be made available for future generations to see what Cashel was like for a child and young adult during the 1940s and 1950s and beyond. Do you have any final words before the...
people who will be watching this recording. Would I have any words? Yes. The only words I have to say, keep catching as it used to be. Keep your love with our town. Keep that uppermost in your mind all the time, man. You, you can't go wrong. If you love your town, you love your people. If you love your people, you love your country. And if you love these things, you can't go wrong. You're, you're very proud of your, your town. Oh, very much so. I owe, so everything I have, I owe to the town. One way or another, they, they, uh, they helped us out. Are you confident that future generations will take care of our heritage and our... So I mean, only look at the trees that surround them. So I mean, they are credit any, any community. Three little boys that go to the trouble of finding out what their heritage will be for them. And I mean, that in itself is, uh, has a lot to say for them. Uh, thank you and hope to see you again sometime. Bye. Yes, I do hope I will see you again sometime.